What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing another rebuild on Madden 21 and today we have the updated franchise so trading is going to be legitimate. Also, I think there's a very big possibility that Juju does get let go and I'm not really sure where their cap went in real life because here it seems like they have cap. Is it because they, they made dumb decisions to resign Hayden and some other players? I'm not sure what it is but here we have cap. I'm not going to go super hard into it. I know there's a possibility they could keep Juju. It's more of a mentality slash personality thing than it is to, uh, what is it called? Than it is for Cap, I believe. I'm going to keep him. I think we can fix him. I, I think a lot of the stuff that goes into his process isn't as bad as people want to make it seem. I think, uh, you know, people are just over exaggerating a little bit i know there are some dumb things like him him uh celebrating uh when they're losing whatever it may be but just i don't know it's just at the end of the day i, I don't i don't think it's as bad as people are making it out to be he's young let him have some fun just get him wrangled in i think honestly big ben may be a big part of the reason why uh you know people aren't taking it necessarily as seriously over there it just seems like i don't know i feel like they just need to move on from ben roethlisberger i, I don't know it was just he just gives me bad vibes. James Conner, is this someone that they are looking to resign? Because, I mean, he's played all right, but I just don't see him as like a game-changing running back. So I think we're going to let him go. Avery Williamson, I didn't even know was was on this team. Actually, I did know that was, he was on their team. I don't feel like they can afford him, though, right? Like, if we're talking about cap issues, he's a guy that would be a big reason for them to be in this troublesome spot I think we're gonna let most of these guys go. I mean, I, I just don't, I just don't see the reason to keep them. I don't see them having the cap to keep them. Let's start the rebuild, honestly. Also, uh, this rebuild's already kind of not easy to complete because there's a big reason why the salary cap doesn't seem as bad. Big Ben decides to retire, and the fact that Big Ben has the Steelers on the hook as much as he does, there's zero chance he retires. I'll tell you what, not a hope he retires, even though the Steelers are one of those uh, groups hoping that he does. Obviously, some decent wide receivers here. The uh, available cap room is not super great. They have Steven Nelson. I'm just trying to figure out where where's this cap situation coming from because I'm looking at the numbers right now and it's not that crazy. I don't, I don't, is there a lot of dead money? Like, I, I keep looking at it. I just don't, I don't see it. Like, I see, I see, let me see. There's a couple of guys that are really expensive, and then there's a ton of guys on rookie deals or just a couple, um, couple mil. It, it's really tiny stuff. Like, it looks like it should be like 130 instead of 170. I, I don't even know. Also, I thought Cameron Hayward was going to be gone. I'm not going to sign any big names just because I don't want people to complain that, oh, the rebuild's not realistic because they have way less money in real life. You're just you're just playing Madden, which isn't realistic. Fair enough. Okay, fine. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think the cap is messed up in here too, so I'm going to save as much money as possible so then it looks more realistic. All right, so we did sign some names. We got Alex Singleton. I think you can get rid of uh, Avery Williamson. I'm going to take a look at the real-life cap numbers. Puna Ford wanted a two-year 14. This is kind of where most of our our usable money that we feel we have IRL is at. We get Darrell Williams on a two-year nine as the starting right tackle, I believe. And then Patrick Peterson, a one-year four, which I don't know what his real-life value is because here he is a very low overall. Uh, but I think we're going to up that to like eight mil because I think we're supposed to have Joe Hayden on like a one-year eight, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, we may just try to fix that real quick because I think Joe Hayden is supposed to be on our team. And obviously here he's just not making much. So uh, we'll sign him just to put ourselves in a bit of a cap spot because I think that's what they did in real life. Don't know exactly how much that number is, though. We might just try to clear the uh, the Patrick Peterson thing, release him, and then clear the cap, because, yeah, I, I completely forgot about it. Also, I try to offer Marlon Mack a lowball deal, just because he's, you know, an injury-prone running back. Offered him a, a four-year, a five-year 24, but obviously that didn't go, so he may be drafting running back. And I feel like we made a really, really good move here, as we got Todd Gurley on a three-year $14 million deal, uh, Pat Elfline could be our center. Got him on a two-year six, I believe. Joe Hayden, of course, the one-year seven. And then Jenkins was almost a minimum deal because, of course, he's nearing the end of his career and not a super high overall. Uh, Mick Fitzpatrick, I want him on the team, but I do not think you should give him the option. I think you can get him for the exact price of the option. 
or less over the next like several years rather than you know go for it now. Uh, and then Terrell Edmonds, another guy that you would definitely say no to, just because once again you can definitely get him for less than the option. I want to say Terrell Edmonds was a was pick 24, 28th. I don't know why I even cared, but you know here we are trying to figure out why I care about the things I care about. I'm so saddened. I'm so saddened. I was like, yo, we could get we could get Najee Harris. He's always done well for me. What a beast. Pick 24, not bad. And then I remember that we have no quarterback, and I'm like, well, looks like it's going to be a Mac Jones type of situation here. Early second. Uh, oh, Jesus, wrong one. Um, yeah, Mac Jones probably going to be our pick, assuming he's there, which usually the quarterbacks are kind of dumb in Madden, so they, you know, they kind of just sit there forever. Parsons at two, that would be the most unpredictable number two ever. Number four, I don't know if the, the Falcons could pass up on quarterback if... Nah, I think they should. I think they should. I, I've already said it before. I think the Falcons should be the premier team to trade down in the draft. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a sliver of a chance Fields or Lance could be all the way down here at 24. A sliver of a chance. I personally do not see it, though. So we are going to be taking Mr. Mac Jones. I just don't, I just do not see, uh, oh, he's hidden. I thought he was normal. I was like, okay, this is going to be a long ball process, but whatever. A little rough at some of the ratings, but there, there's just not a hope. There's just not a hope that uh, Justin Fields or Trey Lance is going to be there. At best, 17, one of them. At very, I mean, even then, I would not put much stock into it, like, at all. We're going to go down to our next user pick. I have no idea who's going to be here. We're hoping for the best. Ooh, Tyson Campbell, though. We do have some linemen. Ah, uh, man, we do need linemen, though. Let's, let's take a look at our cornerbacks first. So, pass rushers up there. Trask is no longer on the, the list, obviously. Uh, it could go wide receiver, but yeah, I, th I think, man, Tyson Campbell is a bit of a hard player to pass up on. Let's see what we got. So we have uh, Mr. Hilton. We're obviously going to release Patrick Peterson here because he just, I'm sorry, Patrick, we ruined you there. Uh, he doesn't belong on the team now with Joe Hayden around it. You're not going to re-sign Joe Hayden. Uh, I don't know what the Nelson, Steven Nelson situation is. At best, you're looking at two good corners going forward. I think Tyson makes the most sense here, but you do have need at O-line. We could trade up to 24, though. Grab one of these guys. I'm not sure. This guy's start of element trade, Mr. Kevin Dotson. Interesting. I think you go Tyson, though. I really do. Go corner. This team has uh, definitely reinvented itself because of the defense, specifically the defensive backs. So uh, I think we're going to go Tyson Campbell here, set up our future. Could be a number two in the, the upcoming season. Who knows? Uh, but let's let's pause the draft. Seattle could, you know, need... Oh, God, with these reorders. Of course, the trading. This is our, our first in-the-field trading opportunity. We do have two guys here, though. I can't remember who, if any, have a hidden. So we're actually going to skip ahead uh, and see, you know, whenever one of them goes, we'll take the other one. And so far, it looks like a pretty damn good decision as we are moving down the draft here quite a bit. And I would imagine, yeah, I was about to say, I would imagine the Bills would be one of the teams. So Green Bay, what can we give Green Bay? All right, so this appears to be a fair trade. I can't really tell because, uh, you know, if I put in the calculator for this, it's saying that we're giving them like 75 points. But a year in the future, especially when you don't know what it is, even though I think this is going to be a very good trade for them, uh, you don't know what it's going to be. So I think you probably take off about 40 or 50 points. I think they won the trade no matter how you want to look at it, but... Overall, you know, here we are. We can't really do much more for it. So, ooh, Quincy Roche, 22 years old. Oh, man, now I don't know. I do not. He's 23. O-line isn't easy to get, though. I have no idea what his damn dev is, which is obviously half the fun. Quincy, I believe, is normal, but he is a very good player. How good is Highsmith? And is he even a freaking... Is he even like a pass rusher? Is he... Is he more of a hybrid type? So Highsmith, 24 years old, I believe. Yes, he is. And, I mean, he definitely could pass rush. Hmm. I, I got to go Quincy. Now I really want to know what the other guy's dev is. Wait, 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 wait. 
Snowden, though, and I love a 6-7 pass rusher. We've done Snowden before. We have done Roche. We're going to go Deontay Brown. And we sold. We should have went Quincy Roche. Oh, we should have started this guy. Oh, well. Should have went for Roche or Roche, whatever you want to call him. I'm sad no matter what you want to call him, so it doesn't really matter to me. Ardarius Washington. Corner's not that big of a need, but we could draft him to play slot corner. Super undersized, obviously, but, I mean, I'd be down. Let's just go to our next pick. We'll end up taking the, the tight end if he's there. I think. I don't know. Oh, he's gone right there. Only a 67 overall, but I would have taken him. Ardarius Washington's still there. We're taking him as our slot corner. 67 overall, and I did remember, as a man, remember him as hidden. However, I cannot always remember these things. And the draft classes do change, so you never know. Uh, 73 catching, 67 block shedding at 178. Um, are you sure about that? Jacksonville couldn't pass up on quantity over quality. So they take our 6 and 7 this, and they get our 6 next year. Once again, I do expect us to make a pretty tremendous drop-off uh, in production. So, you know, these two trades you made to give up players or give up stuff for next year... Not tear. Ooh, Shaka Tony. Never had him before, but I do love me some Snowden. The age is there too. You go with Shaka though. I don't like the the twenty three years old though. Is there anyone else we can get that's like on the younger side? I, I just don't. I don't want to pay. I just don't want the guy if he's this old. We also have this guy named Kane though. Do we go for someone new? Let's go for Snowden again. We'll start him most likely. Sixty four overall. Uh, every time I grab him, I just. I don't realize how bad he is. Like, wh why do I want him all the time? I know he's 6'7", but there was another guy there, like Kando. By the way, these drafts have been, or this, uh, this franchise has been so delayed these days. Uh, if Kando is still there, though, if he's still there, though, I'll take him. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cringe out, but I did. Anyone halfway fast at pass rusher? No. I'll take him. Screw it. Sam Williams. Uh, already the same. Oh, he sucks. <laughs> Never mind. All right, so I have no idea what Dev Mac Jones is. I don't really care too much, though, because he's a starter. Uh, and I think pretty much everyone else is star. So let's move our Darius to cornerback, because that's where he's going to play for us. And already get on to season one. So there are a few things that are a little off comparatively. Wait, I have no idea. I'm just going to keep everything the same, honestly. Um, but there are some, uh, like, very, un not, I'm going to say unrealistic things, but there are some things that are, like, incorrect so, uh, I don't want to change too much, but it appears if we get rid of Vance McDonald, we save money? I don't... I mean, I'm looking at this list here, and I, I don't I don't see that. So, I'm not really sure where, where EA gets these numbers. It probably has something to do with uh, real-life uh, signings and all that, where the game... Uh, or the real-life restructures and re-signings, where the game doesn't have those in yet. So, I don't know. It's kind of hard to keep up with, but... Uh, we'll try to make it as realistic as possible, I suppose. We also have the release Marquise Pouncey. I believe he did retire. Pretty sure uh, him and Mike both retired the same uh, same time, which is pretty damn cool if you ask me. Elfline's going to move to center. Deontay Brown to left guard. And, we, you know, it might not be a great line, but we, we've got one. It's there. We may be uh, Chiefs in the Super Bowl level uh, at some positions, but... You know, at least we're we're living. All right, the team's at 79 overall. We don't have our own third-round pick. Uh, and we've got players playing out of position all across the board. Well, maybe not so much. You know, Dotson's really the only big guy changing position hard here at left tackle. That's a bit of an L. But wide receiver number one is going to be Chase Claypool. I think he's emerged as that number one. He's got the size for it. He's he's actually pretty damn fast, considering like he's he's like a downhill runner type, 92 speed. I think I think I hit that right in the head with the excel and agility. He's just straight line speed. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster fit in that number two role. We actually adjusted his contract to be a four-year 40, which I think is something he's going to have to do if he wants to actually stick around Pittsburgh, like he says. Deontay Johnson, not a bad number three. James Washington, the guy that the Steelers wish would have panned out. Probably doesn't have much of a chance here with the other names there. Todd Gurley, I don't expect him to have some crazy future with us, but he should be a good fill-in number one running back. Benny Snell, I know there's promise for him in real life, but in Madden, he's just terrible. He's just too slow. He's he's literally worse than James Conner in game, which is is hard to believe, you know, because he's James Conner's really bad in Madden. You know, he's just not good in Madden because of that speed. 
as far as defensively, definitely some things you like, definitely some things you want to fix. Uh, Vince Williams, he's the biggest guy I want to fix. Get him out, uh, pretty much. Uh, oh, Singleton star development. Okay, well, that, you know, that changes things. Uh, High Smith, starting right outside linebacker. I was going to put Snowden and Sam. They're terrible. I don't even know why we traded up for Snowden. That was just so stupid. Uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, obviously, an X Factor, which I think he's played good enough to keep that status. You know, in the past, we've, you know, dropped Metcalf from X Factor to Superstar because. I think wide receiver is a little bit easier to uh, look like the real deal, but not actually be it, especially in this league, this day and age where, you know, you can't even touch the wide receiver without getting a sexual harassment claim against the referee uh, or by the referee or, you know, with him, whatever you want. And then cornerbacks, Joe Hayden, you're just lucky the Steelers want you in real life because in modern, you're not great. In real life, he's not bad. In game, he's terrible. Uh, Tyson Campbell, number three in the future, technically number two, potentially. Kind of comes down to who we have to pay. Kind of wish we didn't pay T.Y. Hilton. This is not T.Y. Hilton. It's Mike Hilton, but, you know, I thought of T.Y. because that's the more famous Hilton, in my opinion, uh, because we have Ardarius Washington, who should be playing the number three, and he's not because we don't have enough spots. It's, it's a big mess. Regardless, on to the first actual season. The day of reckoning is among us. You sinners shall be damned and... I don't even know where I'm going with this, but we're going to sign Minka Fitzpatrick to a seven-year deal, obviously. TJ Watt, I mean, you got to sign him long-term, right? I mean, let's just let's just get it out of the way. Yo, really? Is he, uh, is he all right? Is he feeling okay? Terrell Edmonds will get a contract. Um... I'm going to be honest, I don't know like half of these names. <laughs> I don't even know where we got them from. But definitely going to give a contract to Watt. Definitely going to give one to Terrell Edmonds. And DeCastro will probably get another year. Yeah, we're going to be looking for a pass rusher pretty high on the draft, I think. So we give James Washington and a sixth next year for the fourth round pick off the Patriots right at the trade deadline. The Patriots are kind of mid-tier. The, if they get one last push, they might be able to make the playoffs. So maybe that's it for them. All right, so uh, this was a season. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Six and ten, you're like, yeah, hey, okay, I, I can see it. You know, the team kind of fell apart at times. You got a rookie quarterback. Fair enough. We were five and two. We were five and freaking two. And then we lost all these games. I will say a lot of the teams in there did look kind of, you know, tough. But really really that's the performance we're gonna have and of course damn franchise now with that update is just so laggy mac jones 3200 yards 27 touchdowns nine interceptions not terrible want to go for a running back the only good running back well the best running back in the trade block was cream hunt and i was like damn son we would have cream hunt you never know but talk early didn't play poorly but you know touchdowns are a little low receiving i ain't want to talk about it i just don't even want to Blocking was okay, considering it's not the greatest line in the world. Uh, sack totals, Cameron Hayward with 11, paid TJ Watt literally all the money in the world, and he had a pretty average season, below average season, really. Uh, those are the picks, really bad across the board. Uh, need some new kickers and punters, I guess. Boswell's not bad, but definitely on the aging side. Uh, only thing we would have had a chance at is maybe uh, offensive rookie of the year, but unlikely anyways. Number three on the list, Zach Wilson of the Colts. That would be... A steal. I might have to just like up the devs for the quarterbacks and the classes. And I mean, it's not even like unrealistic either. Like you could even easily make the argument that four of the quarterbacks are superstar or better. So we might do that just to make sure that, or hopefully ensure that these guys go higher than they normally do. Of course, you could see uh, 24 to 19, the Saints over the Patriots. What is this? Season recap. Oh, okay. It only shows this year, even though... We did have a last season. I like that. That's, that's kind of cool, right? MVP and all that good stuff. Now we have re-signings. Eric Ebron wanted a four-year 22, 28, 25, something like that. One thing is he's old. Two, he hasn't really played well for us. I know he's not a terrible signing in real life, but here he just hasn't really done well. I guess I say that, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, he's a pretty uh, consistent here. And uh, it's nothing really too special. I mean, it's just whatever. Steven Nelson will let go. We have uh, cornerbacks to work with. Uh, a lot of these guys we have replacements for already. I don't know why this guy thinks he's worth so much, but hey, you go get your degree because you're not going to be making it in the NFL. What? All right, so uh, Tom Gurley, I believe, is on, what was it? A th was it? A th I think it may be a two, three year. I don't know. But quarterback is on a rookie deal. Juju Smith-Schuster, not a bad four-year 40 
Uh, DeCastro is a one year, so definitely look for O line for sure. Uh, tight end is one of the biggest needs on the team, though. Uh, but we have money to spend. That's that's the thing that needs to be noted. We have money to spend. If Tyson would have got up a little bit higher in overall, we would have put him at the number one spot. T.Y. Hilton at the two, but that's just not going to happen here. Uh, Hayward. Hayward went to an X factor. That's clutch. He already went down in uh, overall, but that's that's a clutch win. That is huge, actually. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it for DevOps. I didn't even really think about DevOps. Uh, we didn't have any DevOps. It was just uh, it was Hayward. I mean, I guess that's that's more than and not any, right? Uh, but let's go for free agents. I don't want to spend too much on like a top tier name. You know, cool Jair would be sweet, but you can't do that. Aaron Jones is ours. So many times I see this this versatile demon, and we just can never get him because we just don't have the need. But, oh, we need him. We need a running back. Aaron Jones is our guy. Vaughn Miller would be sweet, but that's just too much money. Chandler Jones, uh, well, we'll see how much. You know, it's ironic enough we just got done, you know, kind of like letting him go in the Cardinals rebuild. We might be able to try to sleaze it like them. You know, these these other teams are trying to lowball him a little bit too. Uh, we might be able to do the same. A two-year 27, I would be down for. I don't think he's going to accept that, though. Kyle Fuller, not a bad little deal, a one-year deal. Maybe we do go for him. That would be interesting. It kind of depends on how much money we have left over. If we have money left over and I don't know if we have to re-sign anyone, we'll, we'll definitely take a look. Orlando Brown, whoa, what's going on here? There's, like, nobody signing these guys. A 7-7? Seven, seven? I mean, it's not really much less than what he would normally want anyways, but... I mean, we we get the last say, huh? Leighton Vander Esch. We could offer him like a th three-year 22. Remember the time I was like, uh, depends how much money we have? Yeah, we have no money. <laughs> All the money's gone. Do we pay for David and Joku? I don't feel like tight end is that important. I really don't. I'm actually a bit surprised Chandler Jones accepted. We got Orlando Brown, Aaron Jones, and Chandler Jones. That's a pretty big win. I mean, this, this defense would be... A very hard defense to stop, specifically that front. I mean, look at the front. Like, obviously Chandler Jones got to play right outside linebacker, but how do you stop them? JJ wanted to play with T Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones wanted to play with TJ. Of course, I switched Chandler Jones over to right out and get. You know, guess what? <laughs> I love this game. But yeah, I can't be mad with uh, the signings we had. So realistically, our our needs drop a little bit. Of course, we're not going to get Landon Vander Esch on that three-year 22, which is fine. Save a little bit of money. We get a two-year deal on Reed for like 11 mil, and then Ebron was like a, a three-year 14, I believe. So yeah, our cap situation is getting tight again. Oh, actually, it was a uh, a three-year 11. I was about to say, because I don't want to pay. You know, we have our guy already. All right, so we have a couple of options. There's a cornerback that looks pretty decent. There's a linebacker that won the Heisman. I don't know if that means what it used to. It used to mean that you would have the highest dev winning a Heisman. I'm not sure, but we'll find out in a moment. And they are all there. So do we take them at nine? The options are tremendous. I don't even know. But linebacker is one of the bigger needs. However... It's not one of the needs that is the hardest to figure, like, find. This guy looks like a can't miss. This guy does look pretty damn good, and he is the Heisman winner. I have no idea. You have a cornerback here. We have three corners, but, man, this, this Richardson guy, it's like, uh, I don't know, dude, linebacker or a corner. Honestly, I think it's linebacker or trade down. We just don't need corner as much. Like, we have... The, our Darius Washington at number three, we have our cornerback number two, Tyson Campbell, and we have Hilton for at least two more, maybe even three more years. So uh, let's see what we get for pick nine, and then uh, if we don't like it, we're gonna we're gonna just gonna take someone because we do have a lot of other good players. You know, we do have Aries Allen who could be something later on. I'm not sure. He looks pretty damn good with those potentials. Uh, we have a speed run. You know, we have a bunch of different players later that we. We do kind of want, like, this left tackle looks like a can't miss center. I mean, it looks like a pretty decent center, obviously. You have a running back. I don't think we should go. Maybe we should go. I didn't look at running back in the free agency. I don't know why we didn't, but got a couple of running backs here. Maybe we go for one of them. Ooh, that's a risky one because the corner is there. The linebacker is there. I want the linebacker the most, but I feel like so do they. We'd add a whole third-round pick. If we move, man, I love the trading. 
I know it's not perfect. You know, there's a lot of people like trying to abuse it. Like, oh, look, I could trade Cam Newton for this. Like, bruh. Here's the thing. I am not a cheeser. So I want it to be easier than it is harder because I can manipulate it to be fair. Whereas if it's the other way around, I have to give super dumb, like, backup running back trades just to get to where it should be. I don't think you can pass on this with the amount of talent we have. I'm going to take this guy because he did win the Heisman. I don't know. if I, This has got to at least be hidden, right? And he is at least hidden. It says we reach, but the fact that he's hidden is an automatic win, even if he's only star. Obviously, star would suck. I'd be really disappointed. I'm expecting at least superstar because of the Heisman, but yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Definitely, definitely a win. Now comes the question, do you risk it for a lineman? <laughs> Let's see what lineman we have. Of course, I think interior is a little bit bigger of an issue. However, we could be moving uh, Dotson back inside, so we'd have to... Castro needs to be replaced. Deontay Brown, I suppose, can still start. Uh, we need, like, two linemen, two starting caliber linemen, right? Because Deontay Brown, he could start, but he's not, like, a god. Oh, we don't need running back. I forgot. We. I was thinking, like, we, we didn't really go for running back. Oh, yeah, we went for Aaron Jones, just, like, a really solid running back. Never mind. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm actually really glad we went for linebacker. Never mind. The question is, do you risk a lineman? Centers have been a lot better for me with Dev. Ooh, he is younger than the tackle, too. Early third. What about the tackle? Mid third. Hmm. Man, this is tough. We also have another tackle. Mitch Barker looks pretty good. We probably go for him as well. You know, because we have another guy, I'm going to go with the center, Brandon Mills. Younger. Ew, he is. The thing is, he's younger, but he is more like he's stuck at that position. Like, he's pretty much a center, right? Like, he can't really... That impact play. Nah, we're going to go for the center anyways. I don't care if he's stuck at center. And we win! Hidden development, 72 overall. That's a win. 100% a win, dude. Yo, the start of the third and the tackle's still there. The question is, is it worth a trade-up? Because you do have Mitch Barker. I don't know, dude. We also don't... I don't even know why I have this guy in the list. He's, he's a bit of a nightmare. Sydney Bone? Hey, I, you know, Sydney's pretty nice. I, I mean... Uh, <laughs> You know, relax there, pal. Uh, running back's not a big need anymore, so things change quite a bit here. We got a corner, Trent Bynes. I suppose you trade up for the, the tackle to, to New York. We give the Giants 92, Williams, and 156 uh, because it, at the worst case, we could just start Dotson, and obviously Brown's going to start. Uh, or, or maybe we get lucky and we start whoever this damn tackle is. Uh, it's probably a dumb decision to go for him because actually, you know what? Anytime I contradict myself, I always have to take a double take. It's like, <laughs> if it's probably dumb, maybe I got to think about it. I mean, he is the best looking player there. So we're going to go for him. Brian Thomas, left tackle. And yo, another hidden lineman. That alone is one of the best drafts we've ever had. At least, well, I keep saying ever, but that we've had in this Madden. It is that hard to grab Hidden development lineman. That two in the same class is literally a massive win. Both of the running backs are gone, but that's fine. Late six. Okay, so we're not like super high into... What is that called? Oh, we could use... Now nah, we don't really need a linebacker. We're not super high into uh, taking any players here, so we're going to trade down. Seems like the later picks are still kind of like... I wouldn't say buggy, but the value is not necessarily there. The Colts, though, that was about the closest value trade we've had. And here we may take someone. Who do we got? So middle linebacker is still there. The DT is the bigger need for sure, though. I'm actually going to reach for this DT. Screw it. Good bench press. Late sixth. And not a bad pick. 69 overall normal. The fact, I mean, the, the what is it called? The true value hasn't been perfect over the years in Madden. But if that actually is true, the 64th best player, that's a fat yikes. Uh, I don't know what his value is on this team going forward. But, I mean, I, I guess I'll take him. And then Aries Allen, we're going to take him to 67 overall normal. I mean, not bad picks, right? You know, I mean, they're not going to be great. May not even ever start for us, but could be worse. Late seventh. Uh, nah, that's a bit of a reach. Let's trade down. If he's gone in the sixth, I don't really care. I do care a little bit, but, you know. We get a fourth off the Vikings next. That's a pretty big win for us. And, hey, they get a 69 overall running back. That's a good trade-up. If you're trading up in Madden in the late part of the draft... 
If you're going for running back, it's not bad. And it works out as we get Larry Clark anyways. 66 overall. Uh, we kind of draft him to potentially play corner. And, yeah, he's a bit raw. He's not a bad backup safety, though. I also do not know if we have kicker and punter. We do have active kickers and punters. We probably should have taken a look at, at these players, though. Uh, I suppose we're going to take best available kicker. Huggins, Max Barkley. Uh, I'm going to go Barkley. Screw it. 68 overall. Wow, that's the highest kick power. I got to see these other guys. That's a fat yikes. All right, so draft recap. Uh, we got Mills, who's going to start because he's hidden. Thomas, who's going to start. He's hidden. Uh, and then we also have the linebacker. Once again, I apologize if you don't like that we check the devs. It changes nothing. Literally nothing. Number 50, and he is an X Factor. We have made a great decision now of course it's not a great decision i mean it's I mean, it's a great decision regardless but it, it it could be a lesser great decision if that corner was also like superstar x factor because once again corner is tougher to get so let's take a look Ooh, oh my god there's no way he's higher than star right like that's actually nuts 79 overall hidden superstar i mean i'll still take our decision oh the giants busted Ooh, the Eagles busted. But yeah, I, I'll still take our guy. I mean, X Factor you can never go wrong with. But yeah, I think if you get a superstar corner, they're equal to or greater than X Factor linebackers. And no other team took kicker or punter, so we should be able to see all the rookies in free agency. I didn't check the linemen because, once again, likely stars. And even if they aren't, they're starting regardless, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, Huggins... I mean, he was better, but not by much. So there's that. Uh, was this a rookie? No. So where do the other guys go? Are they they just such a low overall that the game's just like, nah, we're just going to delete them? We'll take Bolin as well. We obviously have a lot of players to release. And you can see that cap number. Not looking super great. We got to do what we can to get rid of anyone expensive that we do not need. And for what I'm seeing here, uh, that doesn't exist. <laughs> we are in a bit of trouble. Once Mac Jones needs a contract, that's us. We're GG'd. We trade Deontay Brown to the the Bears for 112 projected in the fourth. But yeah, really, it's about the money because uh, I think we made some really good choices uh, for who we went with. Aaron Jones is a very, very solid back uh, with multiple styles to him. Obviously, a really good one cut. Uh, as far as the receivers go, uh, I mean, I feel like Pittsburgh has always done a great job drafting receivers, so we kind of just left the receiver off of our radar. Actually, we did not. I had it on our radar. We just completely missed one. There was a guy I actually really wonder how uh, good he was. He's like a 5'9", 4'3", 40", with some pretty decent agility and excel drills. I think he would have been actually a really good complimentary player. Would have been able to trade Deontay Johnson off because, honestly, I don't think we're going to be able to afford him. You can't re-sign everyone, and uh, obviously he ha really hasn't had much of an impact for this team, uh, for us at least. As far as the O-line goes, I mean, you can't beat uh, drafting uh, hidden development linemen. Hopefully one of them's hidden. Uh, hidden superstar is what I was going to say. Uh, I don't know if they will be, but that would be sweet, specifically if it was the safety, the safety, the tackle. Where are my words coming from? Jesus, keep them together. As far as the defensive side of things, Chandler Jones, he's still a very viable player. We paid, what, a two-year 27? That's not bad, of course, uh, comparing him to where he was in our Cardinals year at league. Uh, rebuild, I think he was a 79 speed player. I don't think it really matters too much here. But, yeah, uh, going forward, the thing is, I mean, I know pass rush is important. I think it's one of the most important positions in the entire league. But in Madden, the stats are so random so, like, I don't know if having a 95 overall pass rusher like TJ Watt on the outside actually means a ton for us winning in Sim because I know statistically it doesn't. Six and a half sacks for a guy making, I don't even know the uh, the average, but it's got to be somewhere around 22 plus a year is horrendous, especially since they don't track pressures. So, like, I, I don't know how they factor it in, but... Overall, if it was a fantasy rebuild, I'd probably leave this position out. Pass rusher, I just wouldn't even care about, honestly. But here we are. I'm not going to say that I believe that we're you know the best team ever, but we should make the playoffs. thing is, 
Might as well get my guaranteed XP. We're gonna win at least seven games. Thank you, Terrell. He had a breakout last season, didn't get it. This time he does. Only 5k XP, though. But trust me, I will take it. Okay, so we have some more re-signings. Devin Bush is among the biggest names because his value is there. Super hard to uh, to match that speed and you know get someone as good as him. Uh, Ford is back on the list of re-signings. It was actually a pretty decent signing for us, but we may move on from him. Like I said, we can't afford everyone. Uh, and Mr. Tuit, Stefan Tuit. I think he deserves a three-year deal. Can't go wrong with him. There you go. And then DeCastro, that's one we have to wait for after the season. I don't know what his overall is going to be. I don't know if he's even going to be here still. He should be, but you never know. And at worst, you pay a couple extra mil for a tag. And I forgot we had Alan Lazard on the roster. So Deontay Johnson to the Bears for pick 89. Their wide receiver situation is dire. And they look like they're actually putting together a pretty good season. As uh, Deontay Thompson become uh, Deontay Thompson. Deontay Johnson becomes their number one wide receiver right out the gate. Obviously, you can make the argument for Mooney, but, you know, overall-wise, you know, he's only 26. All right, head to the playoffs. Are we in them? We win pretty nicely throughout, but we lost the final two, which could have gotten us a bye week. But here, we're back. We were 6-10. and 10, Now we're 10-6. and six. You know, it's a win. We actually had a nice couple of wins when it was kind of 50-50. We're like 4-3, and three, and we had some really important games like the Bengals and Browns who were better than us and of course division rivals had the ravens won those games i mean very impressive stretch there just wish we had finished out a little bit stronger but hey we get to the postseason and mac jones it's a pretty good season is that good enough for superstar though that, i mean it's close but i don't know aaron jones eight touchdowns 100 1116 yards not bad at all juju could and should be superstar nice chase claypool everyone else i don't even want to talk about it uh, O-line, gotta love it. Like I'm saying, do we have a better chance to win because of adding higher overall players, or do the sacks actually matter? Because if they do, what's the point of getting a guy like Orlando? 17 sacks allowed? Like, I don't I don't get it. I really don't. Uh, Pat Mitchell, he can't get any higher than X-Factor, unfortunately. Campbell and Edmonds could get dev up. Sack totals, disgusting. L like, uh, I'm not even gonna talk about it, just whatever, man. Got the best pass rush in the league by a mile. And we put up mediocre numbers. Justin Fields, 4-12 and 12 MVP. Sure, I'm sure, I'm sure that's how that goes. <laughs> Looking at other awards, any at all. Pat Mitchell, of course, Rookie of the Year. Doesn't surprise me. And that kind of appears to be it. What a weird season. These stats tell me that we're going to get smoked first game. That we're just pretenders. 88 to their 83. I mean, we deserve to win, but... This would be the perfect example of us being pretenders, us being five overalls higher, playing at home. I mean, we should win this game. Bengals lose to the Jaguars. So quarterback Tannehill still looks like, okay, fair enough. I think he is superstar, so he should avoid regression at an okay rate. And interesting, back and forth here. Six to zero. Guys, you want to you wanna play some offense? Any offense at all would be wonderful. Field goals, just everything's a field goal, huh? I mean, defense is done about as much as you can, honestly. Of course, that's going to be a punt. This would be the worst postseason game of all time. And the Titans win the worst postseason game of all time. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. How is that the game? 9-9 nine to nine overtime in the playoffs. That would be disgusting. Such a disappointing season. Such a disappointment. It's just terrible. And, of course, randomized stats. Back at it again as TJ Watt puts up, like, what, a third of what he did in the regular season in the postseason here against a good team's offensive lineman. As you would expect, the Titans were not a singular step close to the uh, Super Bowl, similar to us. 35 to 24, the Seahawks win. Now let's take a look at these uh, these recaps. Is this actually going to show like 21 and 22? Nice, it does. So at least that actually does work. The thing that's very interesting though is why doesn't it show uh, offensive rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year? It just shows like the best one they think across the board is like all NFC, you know? I can't look at a AFC. Oh well. Looks like Sean Richardson is the uh, rookie of the year for the Niners. So. Both teams ended up with good players. I can't really be mad. All right, looking at re-signings. Uh, Chris Boswell is definitely regressing. However, he's still having 
really good season. So we're going to give him a one year. Puna Ford, you got to once again, you can't keep everyone. There is this window where we could realistically probably keep uh, this team all intact for at least another season, but I think you just got to save money and try to keep it longer than one season. Like, who do we have to re resign? We have to resign Claypool. That could be kind of pricey. Hilton, I think you replace. So this is where we would look to draft a corner. Chandler Jones, I mean, I regret wholeheartedly. Can we get rid of him now? We could, but it wouldn't be worth it. Uh, I mean, based on contract situation, we can keep the majority of this team intact for two more seasons, which is really impressive. Obviously, DeCastro, whether he's here or not, would be someone you probably need to replace. His overall is kind of on the lower side. Uh, Claypool, of course, you can afford, and we will. And like I said, with T.Y. Hilton, I think you let him go. Let's actually take a look if we have any dev-ups. All right, moment of truth. We will have to wait a little while. We do not get one for Mac Jones, but Juju Smith-Schuster does get one, so at least we got something on offense. Defensively, uh, what am I looking at? Campbell went up to superstar. Is Hilton... Is he already superstar or no? He just went up to superstar. Okay, so we did get some DevOps. Mitchell, obviously, a very high overall. Technically starting number one caliber uh, this season, potentially. Man, there's a lot of high devs on this defense. I mean, how did we not win against the Titans? That is pathetic. The offense, uh, terrible. Just terrible, dude. Jair back in free agency, as you would expect, because, you know, great cornerbacks deserve to be there all the time. Uh, Matthew Ioannidis. Just talked about these things. I can't. We can't. We just can't. Do it. We can't do it. All right. So we offered a bunch of contracts for, you know, like backup level talent. Dawson, Cricket. It's actually a decent fullback. He's a star development fullback. Uh, Stick and Sheffield don't really matter too much. No one offered Ford. So we gave him like a two year 11, I believe. So we win there. Sternberger, backup. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? So we give the Bills 21, 113, and 105 for pick 16. In which there's a pass rusher. He's a late first. I don't know how good he is, but of course, being one of our bigger needs, considering what is actually available, there's also this guy, I suppose. But what is also available, even though he kind of, nah, I, th I think he will be a pass rusher. You got to go for him. So, Mr. Jeremiah Cohen, he isn't hidden, but he is a 77 overall normal, and he actually is built almost exactly like one of those Chase Young clones, but of course, no hidden development in this case. But hey, I will take that. That's a still a, a massive win, obviously. So we have a late second round pick here. We have a corner. Oh, he's a late fourth. We have a corner. We also have a safety that could probably play corner. This guy looks good, but we're kind of risking it. Mid first time, what about the corner? Mid second. Uh, we're going we're gonna to risk it on Matthew Tillman. And he's 74 overall. Oh, he is way slower than I thought. Yeah, that's an L. If it wasn't for the speed, if I could have taken away four Excel and put it onto his speed, he would have been a massive win. But that is just massive L. That's a, that's literally just backup safety. The cornerbacks there, well, we're we're gonna risk it. Seventy overall. Ooh. Okay, we're we're taking a lot of normal development players here. We're gonna go to the start of the fourth, and if our wide receiver is there, who looks like a can't miss player, even though we probably just missed him, uh, we're gonna take him. So Adam McLaughlin gonna go to the Giants. We give him a fifth round pick with 117 to move up to pick one. We still have another fourth round pick. Let's go for our wide receiver, Adam McLaughlin. This is, this is a can't miss player. It's an obvious win. Uh, well, I mean, he's not hidden, but obviously with that speed and all that, he's a good player. He'll be our number three. We have a tight end here. I mean, tight end's kind of on the list need. The needs list. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one. Uh, he's good enough. I'll take him. Really? A 66 overall? So last draft was a win. This draft was an obvious and utter L. All right, year, what is it, three now? We have an 88 overall team. We look like we're getting there. It's just Mac Jones needs to take that extra step. Receivers look pretty good. Tight end definitely could replace. Uh, O-line looks decent enough. You know, we got a center and right tackle that should be great for many years to come. We got Orlando Brown on another three-year. Obviously, he gave a bunch of sacks. But once again, I feel like the overall means more than the actual sack totals. So... At least that's what I would assume. Otherwise, what's the point of even going for offensive linemen or pass rushers when they're consistently bad in sim? Uh, but yeah, running back, obviously solid too. Uh, defense, I mean, there's colors all over the place here. You can see we don't have a single normal. I mean, I guess bronze is a color too. Is I don't even know, dude. <laughs> I would assume it is. But yeah, look at how colorful we are. We've got reds and yellows and, and silvers and... 
I mean, even our backups, you can barely see the bronzes. Obviously, uh, Cohen at some point will start, but it be what it be. Uh, as far as the cornerbacks go, never really gave our Darius Washington much of a shot, but hey, number three now, full on, no joking around. T.Y. Hilton, it's Mike Hilton, damn it. <laughs> Mike Hilton at number two, Tyson Campbell making the jump to number one because, of course, he is bigger, built better for it. But yeah, this is a very good team, and it should be a special season. I would be disappointed with anything under 12 wins. We could chase Claypool on a five-year 60, which is kind of a win. Mike Hilton might actually get the re-signing from us. We'll see. DeCastro could. Chandler Jones 100% will not, even if he actually shows up this season. Dotson will get a three-year. And, I mean, we're, we're set, dude. Until we get to sign Mac Jones, we're set. How in the world is this possible? How? Of course, we lost, but Puna Ford is a superstar now. All of a sudden. A little late, though. All right, here we are headed to the playoffs, and we win at the end, which is clutch. Just beat the Browns, and now we have to face them again in the wild card round. This is how the season went. It was pretty good starting, and then we lost a couple near the end, and, eh, you know, we at least made it 10-6. and six. I really think this team is way better than 10-6, and six. but here we are with Mac Jones. The yards are really high. The picks are a little bit higher than normal. Touchdowns are about the same, but maybe Superstar. I wouldn't give it to him if I was, you know, in charge of it because that completion percentage is really low. Aaron Jones, another really good season. One would debate even better than last year. Actually, there's no debate. This is 100% better than last year. I thought he had more touchdowns last year, but he obviously didn't. Uh, as far as receiving goes, Juju and Clay Pool. I must call it Clay Chase. <laughs> Chase Claypool, uh, 1,111 yards, not bad. Okay, so, I mean, not a bad season, actually. The big three here, looking pretty good. And once again, <laughs> what a joke, dude. I mean, come on, really? Uh, it'd be what it'd be. TJ Watt, eight and a half sacks, seven for Chandler. I mean, better than normal, but that's still really bad considering what this front is. Tyson Campbell, good picks. Fitzpatrick, good picks. And yeah, not a bad season. This is this is less of a pretender season. I actually I actually think this is a pretty damn good season from us. Did we get on the list? We did not with Mac. Uh, Adam McLaughlin, rookie of the year. Okay, a little surprising. Uh, very surprising actually. Mac Jones not a top ten quarterback in the AFC, really. Aaron Jones number seven. Yo, somebody's rigging this damn thing, and I am not happy about it. Regardless, though. Going up against the Browns, not an easy team to beat, but we are a higher overall than them, which is just not something you see commonly. They have Gallup as well, so they replace Odell, who always goes a free agency, uh, with a pretty decent replacement wide receiver, so it's not like they're really lacking in that sense. They still have Baker, which I think either they would have already lost him or they're losing him this season. They're intact. The Browns are intact. There's no excuses for them if we win. And, hell, we're playing a lot better than last postseason. Uh, that's all I care about, of course. It's not looking great here, though. I will admit we're down two touchdowns. You got to score a touchdown there, dude. Field goals just aren't going to cut it. Best case, what happens here? You're still down five. And it works out. Maybe maybe, maybe I'm wrong. No, no, I'm not. I'm never wrong. Who would think I'm wrong? Come on. Bro, I'm getting sick of this. I'm getting sick of us losing. I mean, this is a very talented wide receiving group. Just, I mean, talented group in general. And that is a dime to chase. What a throw. That was a dime. Mac Jones having a pretty decent game. I mean, it's the playoffs. It's pretty common, I would imagine, to throw a pick in the playoffs. Going to sell down to uh, Juju, but you got all the timeouts in the world. Actually, probably take one here just for the hell of it. When you're at the 50, uh, what, 14-yard gain with three timeouts and a minute 30 left isn't the worst play in the world, right? Although we're going to have to throw this away. And every time you're in the pocket, as long as it, you throw it away with the analog stick, it's grounding every time, and it's so painful. It's so painful because there's a guy over there, and there's a reason why that that's a penalty every time. It's because the game is coded so poorly that they can't tell the difference between somebody getting hit while being grounded while throwing it versus just purposely throwing it last second. The game can't tell the difference. And Chase is just a god. He's just a god. Obviously, he's playing against a linebacker there, and... It's on all mountain. You could probably tell by the fact that he was actually covered a lot better than I thought. I was like, oh, he's a god. But then I realized he was going against a freaking linebacker. I was like, yeah, maybe not so much of a god there now. Once again, just attempting to get closer here. 
And that is 100% pass interference. Illegal contact, call it something, but whatever it is, is not a clear, oh, good D. It's not good D. It's, it's tragic. And oh, there goes Satellite McGee. Aaron Jones is in. Of course, they want us to go for two. Why wouldn't you? Stick looks like a good play, especially with Aaron Jones, the route running guru here. I mean, everything looks wide, but I can't tell if it will be. And there goes Aaron Jones again. 104 left. The Browns have all the timeouts in the world. They could take this overtime. Hell, they could win this. Steelers' defense has been playing pretty well, but we'll see. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, my. Talk about lockdown. What a disappointing end to the Browns' season. Obviously, we helped the team. I don't know if they actually needed it, though. If Other than time con uh, constraints, it was a third and three we came in, but I'm sick of this team being better than almost every team we face and uh, not winning a playoff game in hell. And maybe not even almost every team we face. Literally every team we face, we have been better. Like, we are four overalls up on the Browns. The Browns are goaded in Madden. And, like, it's ridiculous. Of course, Mac Jones crushed it even without our help. Uh, as far as rushing goes, Aaron Jones is all right. It's all right. Nothing special. Uh, Chase Claypool, obviously, we kind of helped with those numbers. Aaron Jones. The game just doesn't utilize receiving backs. You know, he's like a do-it-all back, but... You know, those abilities, his, his receiving ability is pretty much useless in Madden, so it's kind of unfortunate, but it worked out for us when we were actually in the game. All right, to the divisional, going against the Jets of all teams, who took Micah Parsons at pick number two. Like, this is, ooh, snowy game. Obviously, this is going to make too much of a difference. I kind of like the Jets, dude. There's, there's some teams, man. It is very tough to decide what teams I want to be for next Madden franchise. I mean, I just don't know. The Jets are a cool team, and especially if they take a quarterback at two. All right, so looking at the matchup so far, right to left is them. We're losing 14-0 to to an 86 overall Jets team. 21-0. to zero. I love this game. Oh, well, we just put up two touchdowns in the span of uh, minute 15. Nice. Sim, is, Sim sure is something as we're driving down hard and then just, like, lose the ball. Like, are we fumbling? Like, can I have, like, a official word on what's happening here? Because uh, it doesn't seem to be very fair, and I'm starting to get a little freaking pissed. The ball just keeps changing possessions, like, last second every time. And Aaron Jones is an absolute... Once again, you see the coverage, right? I mean, I'm not... You see the coverage. This is insane. You know, that's an amazing play by him. Ebron gets enough of a separation and stumbles his way out of bounds. What a hero. Look at that wind whipping. All right, potentially going back to Mr. Jones. Do have Ebron on that look. Looks like the linebacker is going to stay down to cover Jones. And he does. It's a tough throw. And Ebron drops it. Damn. Right on target. Ebron's got to catch that. That's, that's just a ball you got to catch, man. It's all right, though. We coming back to try to win this double slant look with Jones... To the out. Probably do have the other side more open, but this side's safer to throw to. Six-yard line. They want me to run inside zone, and as far as real life goes, really good decision. You know, it's who would expect it, but it's Madden. They'll expect it. And Mac Jones running has enough speed to get it done. All right, we got life. We got a shot. In the snow, too. This is insane. We're pressing up with some of the best corners ever assembled. And Stefan to it. Lockdown, we got a shot. I ain't going to make an argument about this one. If we somehow come back, go to overtime, and win the game, <laughs> yeah, it was us. The other last game, I think, could have you know could have happened either way. There you go, Adam. Oh, look at him run. Down to the 46. We're going to hit him with dagger. Dagger? The PA crosser. Actually, no, screw it, we aren't. We're going to go four verts. I like me some four verts. Ebron on the inside, but maybe I don't like it as much as I thought I did. Yikes. May have had Chase, but guess who's wide open? Adam. Uh, Alan Lazard. I just keep thinking of McLaughlin here. This snow is so brutal to stare at. Got to take Chase there. Oh, how does he drop that? Is it a dime? I don't know how he did that. Mac Jones somehow made that throw so far away, and yet he got that ball down very fast. I should have taken him. That's a bad decision. Maybe not. Man, Mac Jones is making some throws here, though. 
Oh my, as I was talking about it with Mac. Well, I guess it's not our year. I was so ready to freaking leave Shaquille Griffin with three interceptions. Likely story, dude. For I don't know why I didn't notice that it was their quarterback was Cam Newton. That's why literally broken sim. God damn, dude. I don't want to see this. We lost. Let me leave. I wanted to leave so bad. I, I even hovered over and like, quit for a second. I was like, I got to just let it happen. As we were talking about uh, Mac Jones making some really good throws, he just absolutely whips away the game. Obviously, it is, you know, snowing or some wind, but damn, son. I mean, Ebron's open there. Uneventful seasons. And, of course, our spot gets taken by the team that doesn't even make it to the damn Super Bowl. Cowboys win. But let's take a look at our uh, DevOps. Mac Jones. Damn, Mac Jones is still a good overall, but only star. I guess to be fair, in the long run, it would probably save us on a re-signing. Chase Claypool with superstar development trade, mid out, short out. Okay, so they loves his out routes, I suppose. Never really looked at a... Uh, that's disgusting. Chandler Jones. To be fair, we're actually going to save some money. See you later, Chandler. Not a chance. We got a backup that's better than anyways, but... Even if we didn't, I wouldn't want him. And Chris Boswell. I mean, he's lasted a lot longer than I thought he would here, so I'm going to keep him again. And anyone like to play for a new team, likely giving him the tag. See you later. Chances of playing for a new team. All right, so uh, it's been, you know, first time in a while we've actually lost a starting player, and it'd actually be a positive thing, right? Juju needs another contract, which, I mean, that just proves how long we played. So right end is the biggest need as... I don't know if we're going to re-sign Cameron Hayward considering his age. Oh, not even not even his age. I'm considering it. It literally is the whole thing. 35, usually they retire around 36, so he'll be gone. Orlando Brown was a freaking bust of a signing. We'll see what we do there. Uh, we're actually doing pretty well with money, though. As far as Mac Jones goes, I think you just pay him now. So uh, we're actually in a good spot. This team could go on for, for some time, I feel. As far as free agent signings go, though, not a whole lot here. Isaiah Simmons would be a great signing, but you just don't need him if you're us. Corey Lindsley. Wait, did we let um, DeCastro go? No, I think we were just looking at DeCastro needs a contract. If, he, if we would have let him go, it would have went with Corey there, but don't need him. I mean, there's really not much we need here. I, I think we're going to be pretty much foregoing literally the entire free agency period pretty much. Maybe we get a backup running back. Oh, yeah, we need a backup running back outside of that, though. Zach Moss, not really asking for much. I know he's slow, but Thunder-Lightning combo. Oh, he's too slow. I didn't think he was that slow. I thought he was like 88. Oh, good thing I looked. I didn't even notice it. DeCastro retired. Never mind. We will be taking uh, Corey Lindsley. I'm not saying we're going for one final season because we usually go for at least five if we don't win a Super Bowl, but... Uh, that is kind of like a you know a win now type of signing. It is only a one year, so it doesn't really hurt us. Worth it, worth it. So we did get Corey Lindsley, which is a massive signing. We get Albert, uh, Albert O. Yeah, Albert O. That's his name. Uh, Lofton as a very decent, like a I think it was a three or four year deal. He's a star development pass rusher, of course, at twenty five and seventy one overall. Not much of a shot, but you know, not a bad backup. For when Reed goes, and really now we're going to be drafting defensive line. Honestly, that's probably the main look, uh, and I don't know if there's going to be anyone there for us. All right, so we have pick 27, the highest. Ooh, who's this running back? It's Miggy McGee. Uh, not a bad running back, but uh, the highest player we have is a defensive tackle, Mr. Parker Bishop. It's our biggest need. Skills look decent. Combine grade's actually a lot better than I thought. He is a little undersized, but... Aaron Donald 2.0, maybe not 2.0, it's physically impossible, 73 overall hidden, and he's kind of built like Aaron Donald, just saying a little bit slower, but I'm just saying, not a bad pick. Of course, next pick, we do have a safety, but I mean, we're kind of locked in at safety anyways, even though the guy is very, very talented, could go for another pass rusher, early third, now nah, we don't need one though, like we're, we're pretty much set there. Uh, we have a tight end who's, I mean, tight end just has not been a good draft for us lately. Uh, we have a tight end, and then we do have a wide receiver. Where the hell is he? Yeah, yeah they're right there. Don Burris, I mean, you can't skip that combine grade, right? Like, it's just, it's too good not to draft. You know, there's doing well in the combine. You know, like the, the Adam McLaughlin guy we had. I can't remember what his thing, like 7.4, 7.5, but 7.8, that is just like a clear-cut god uh, ooh, the tight end's 23. That is such a risk for no reason. I'm not even going to take him. We're going to reach on Burris just because of that combine grade. 
And like I said, you just some players you can't miss. This is one of them. I mean, he just he's just too good. That guy would have been taken in the first round easily in the user league, without a doubt. All right, is that running back still there? The running back is gone, surprisingly. We have this mid four. This guard looks pretty good. He might be the guy we take, actually. We have a 7.2 safety. We have a right tackle. I mean, it's a real hit or miss, get lucky type of situation. We're going to go for Amos. Deshaun Amos, 70 overall normal, unfortunately. But you win some and you lose a lot if you're drafting linemen. I didn't realize we didn't have that many draft picks, but here we are moving to the sixth round, I suppose. Not going to trade up when we don't really have that many needs. And more importantly, we don't really have that many prospects. Like the best we have left is Zimmerman. Like, come on, dude. I don't have any. Oh, no. Screw it. It's a resign year. Grab a quarterback. Make him feel like he's not useful. <laughs> have a backup plan, I guess. Whatever. Obviously, that guy was an absolute boss. We're going to trade this down. Best we get is a seventh off the Dolphins next year, huh? Of course, looking... Oh, Jesus. Looking at the draft recap. No matter what this guy's dev is, even if he's X-Factor... He can't play this season, but he will replace uh, Hayward next season no matter what. Uh, well, actually, maybe not no matter what because Ford could be gone. Only star anyway, so nothing really crazy special. Oh, yeah, what about our uh, wide receiver? Hmm, actually, this could this could play a factor. Actually, no, you won't. We have a number three spot for him. Adam McLaughlin was good, but this guy's already hidden, so he's going to play the number three spot minimum. So star development trade. Number three regardless. But yeah, if he was an X-Factor, it may have swayed our decision for Juju. But I don't know. I think the main thing that's going to sway Juju is the money. Because uh, it could be quite costly. I wanted to sign Brady so so bad. Give him his eighth ring. Uh, that would have freaking troll city. But obviously that's a very unrealistic uh, move. He would definitely be retired at a 68 overall. But he's still here. <laughs> All right, so season four, 90 overall with 93-0, oh, 93-D. Uh, we have great players across the board. Really, we could have used a better tight end, but Eric Ebron is is viable enough, I guess. Catching's a little bit low. Offensive line, looking pretty damn god tier, actually. Offense in general, skill positions, clearly the best in the league. Defensively, best defense in the league by far as well. I mean, you got 90s at so many different positions and uh, you know free safety middle linebacker we're going to count it middle linebacker we're going to count it this guy we're going to count it that guy we're going to count it Cameron Hayward maybe he's only an 87 overall but ratings are of a 90 you know 92 strength 93 block shed 92 power move 92 play rec 94 awareness not 89 pursuit I don't know how he's not in the 90s I don't know if it's maybe they think he's a 4-3 end and they don't like the speed I guess I don't know but that's I mean, those if those are 87 stats, give me an 87 every time. All right, we have some re-signings. Juju Smith-Schuster has a breakout scenario. I don't know if he's actually going to get it now, but a four-year deal worth 64 would be worth it. Damn it, if he gets that x back, I'm going to be pissed. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said, Orlando Brown, he's not playing super well, but it's Madden. I think the overall means more than the actual performance. I think the game is just glitching out as it usually does. Corey Lindsley will give him a one-year deal. I think we can afford everyone. Maybe should have went to uh, Mac Jones first. A five-year 152. We can afford that. Assuming it's still the same in a little bit. Of course, Cameron's going to be gone. Mike Hilton didn't realize that speed. He gone for sure. Uh, and then Puna Ford, we might actually re-sign. The, uh, 35 points scored. We're still going to try to sign up before we talk. Just in case, because I think... Uh, wait, what about the bonus? So the bonus is what he wants. Get that bonus up to 658. Happy to sign. Let's see what we got. Breakout teammate, X-Factor. Yeah, I mean, I figured it wouldn't be, but just in case, I'm pretty sure Dev is the main factor for signings. Mac Jones, I mean, it's not like he's the cheapest guy in the world here, but he's playing well enough. He deserves the contract. Let's get that out of the way. And 88 overall, almost 89. Probably would have cost us a little bit more if he would have gotten 89. Uh, and then Tyson, that's a seven-year deal worth 95 million. And now we're starting to get to the, like, are we got enough money? Are we got it? Yep, that's the one. Our Darius gets the signing. Puna Ford probably gets a year. I don't know, actually. We'll wait till the season's over so we know exactly how much money we have going to the next year. But, yeah, definitely our Darius. And everyone else may need to be replaced. Still really good, though. I mean, the team's sick regardless. Our Darius is only a slot corner, and I don't think we can actually play him at number two, but I'd still pay a five-year 29 for a slot corner that looks as uh, viable as him, especially with that, that block shedding. 
Damn, I seen a bunch of texts, and I was like, oh, maybe he got to superstar. Our Darius did not. All right, heads to the playoffs. Once again, we have easily the best team in the league, so we should be in there, and we are only 10-6. and six. Gotta love it when we're only 10-6, and six, even though we're one of the best teams in the league. Mac Jones gets the signing, and he may have done enough for superstar. That's a close call. I will say the completion percentage is way better than the last time he was at his closest. Pass rating of 105 is pretty nice, too. Jones, another really good year receiving Juju will be an X-Factor after all anyways. Well, one would assume the rest of the guys not super great. Blocking, I don't, I don't understand. 88 overall, 89 overall, giant left tackle. Just can't get it done. Of course, sack totals, finally TJ Watt put some numbers up. Potential MVP, defensive MVP uh, award here. Two interceptions, 15 sacks, 11 for Hayward. Uh, two had had some decent numbers as well. Kicking Boswell has been pretty damn good. That's probably his worst season, and even then, it's it's still really good. Uh, where did our guys rank? Leo Spear, interesting. Where is our guy? Not even on the list again. Mac Jones at five for Offensive Player of the Year on the AFC side, at least. TJ Watt, number two. And then JJ Watt. I forgot he's uh, on the Texans on this one. I got to rechange everything. But as far as any other awards may have gone... Uh, Juju at number two. Where is TJ? Number one D uh, linebacker, obviously, and then kicker I didn't look at, but it didn't matter because he would not have won number one. Boswell was great, just not great enough. Uh, speaking of JJ Watt and TJ Watt, here comes the battle. All right, going to the end of the game, my monitor sounds very loud, even though it's on one. I don't even know what the hell is going on here, but seven all, seven ten. Oh, yeah, touchdowns all over the place. Uh, halftime is going to be an interesting one as it's a 21-17 game. Teams just throwing the ball around the field here. Uh, come on, Pittsburgh looking decent here. Once again, it's a very bad team, though. So, yeah, we may have won. We put up some points, but we gave up a lot of points against a team that just isn't ready for the freaking Super Bowl. But yet, they almost had a chance there. Mac Jones, really good numbers. Uh, look at this minor. He's not even old enough to be in the league. <laughs> Aaron Jones, not bad, I suppose. Receiving decent stuff for the, the two main guys. JJ and TJ crush it against each other's teams, but ultimately we won Ardarius with a pick. Ardarius, that name is coming up a lot here, isn't it? Now we are going up against the Buffalo Bills in the divisional. 89 overall for them, 93 for us. And once again, you got to remember, we, we got cucked a bit. Great team, and we've been underperforming. Here we go. 7-0 against the Bills, 7 all Start of the second quarter. Nice touchdown drive. I think we've scored every drive. Well, they're having on that one. Nice way to way to go. Back to back drives we haven't scored on because I just had to bring it up. Come on, fellas. Thank you. There we go. 14 or 16 to 24. 31 to 16. And we win. Mac Jones. Two interceptions. Of course, Josh Allen threw threes. I mean, I guess that's worse. We did have two extra rushing touchdowns than they had, so. We did have a more successful offense, but got to limit those turnovers. I'll tell you what. Snowden. I don't even, like, does he even have a starting spot on the team? And, of course, Ardarius again getting himself an interception. at C block. I don't know, dude. I don't get it. Orlando is just so bad. We now move on to the championship round going up against the Colts, who have seen some success lately. 88 overall for them. 94 overall for us. It's Pittsburgh team is loaded. All right, here we go. Simming to the end of the game, 7-0, seven, 7 all, 14-7, 14 all, man, this has been a bit of a battle, but the clock was against us on that one, and a huge passing touchdown, field goal right afterwards, looking pretty decent, this is a close game, dude, oh, this is so close, five minutes left, we're up three, Colts driving, they get the lead, just don't turn over the ball, third and nine, don't punt it, you, you can't punt it there, you know, maybe if they're up by six or so, but they're not. They're not up six. They're up by four. So even if you do turn over the ball, fair enough. You know, you, you get a potential chance if you truly believe in that defense like you're uh, you're willing to go for, right? And you trust Aaron Jones. Oh, my load. When you're going for – you're going to your running back on third uh, or fourth and nine, and I, I mean, that's some gutsy stuff. I'll give you that. Me. Thank you. Thanks for the compliment. And Aaron Jones again over the middle. Nobody's getting open. Obviously, we're running a pretty basic uh, attack here, but still, you got to think slants and whatnot. It's got to get somewhat open, right? 
Right down the middle, could have Chase Claypool open. I don't try. I'm, I have uh, run up field. Damn it. Right bumper just did not want to run up field. I couldn't trust him where he was sitting, especially on first down. Chase over the middle on the double. McLaughlin wide open over the middle would be the case, but I, you know. And there goes Chase again. Next gen gameplay makes you want to cry, by the way. Just saying. Looking for that play over the middle. We had Chase, and I, I can't. The ball, it, they just took so long. Like, the receivers just take so long to run their routes in next gen. It's so freaking rough to watch. Like, I just can't wait all day. Oh, what is that throw, Mac? Went low just in case. I didn't want the ball to sail. Didn't have that issue. <laughs> They're giving me the gong here. Come on, man. I don't need the pressure. Ebron! Pass interference to the one! I mean, that's clear cut. You ain't arguing that one. All right, then I'll let the AI finish this out because they're probably going to fumble or throw a pick. I can't wait. Get the touch on first play. Good job. Although, maybe first play isn't the best look. We're coming in here. So, obviously, we're going to try to ice them. Badgley, the old Chargers kicker, I believe. They really got down the field in like 30-some seconds. You got to be joking me, dude. Come on, Sheffield. And, of course, acted as if nothing happened, and it's overtime. God damn, please. They're primed to win. They're primed. We did all that for the team, and we still heads. Finally. I always. I would love to know the statistics of me guessing heads or tails. I've got to be at, like, 20% uh, correct uh, correctional officer. That's the one. Oh, why did I go to end a game? We must have drove down a little bit. Okay, second A, we got to come in because the game is just going to clear cut and let them walk down the field all day here. We're going to run commit. We're risking it. And it's worth it because we get the stop. Pittsburgh ball. Nice. This is scary. Field goal wins it. Field goal wins it. And we win it, right? It looks like we win it. We're headed to the Super Bowl. What a game. Almost 500 passing yards from Mac Jones with five touchdowns. Zach Wilson, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, rushing, we were a little bit better than them. Chase and Juju are uh, the dynamic duo that Pittsburgh has needed. Uh, Leonard, oh my, please. Look at this. We didn't get a single sack. How do we win? Jeez, bro. What a game. On to the final one, potentially. I'd say potentially, because if we lose, we're, we're doing another one. The real moment of truth is going to be if Mac Jones is superstar or not, which would obviously be a clutch signing. Of course, shocker, Green Bay loses. Uh, Mac Jones still not superstar, and Juju doesn't go to X-Factor. That is a scam if I've ever seen one. As far as defensively, it does not appear that we had a single player go up in development, not even Cohen. 87 overall Seahawks to our 94 overall Steelers. We never just have like a blowout, you know? We never just destroy a team. It's always just like we barely win or we barely lose, even though we're better than every team by quite a bit. If there's any game where that's going to not be the case, like, please, just blow blow the Seahawks out. Come on. Thank you. I see how drives down super easily for a touchdown, and we've already lost. You can already tell we're going to lose. You're going to see it. You're going to see the way our guys are moving on the field because they're just not. That's the problem. Come on, offense. Thank you. Thank you. Fourth quarter, they, I think we just gave up like a pick six or something weird. Come on in there. Fourth and one, and you ran it. This team trusts Aaron Jones even more than I do. Bruh. Okay, we do stop him to a field goal, but offense is just back, 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 back. Like, how? How do, how do we get sacked so much? And yet with our insane team, we don't sack anyone. How and why? Give me their definition of crossers, please. Play action cancel because they're going to be coming after us hard here. And that, I mean, that's a tough one. I don't, I don't care that it's crossers, P PA shot, whatever it is. How is he covering him? That just proves it's it is, this difficulty is tough. Or next gen just saw a little bit of both to be fair, but. Mac Jones, I mean, maybe had uh, the man there, but 
Going to run with Mac Jones, gain like literally nothing. Going to let them play it out now, actually. Seahawks got Vaughn Miller. Interesting. Okay, so we get sacked a couple times. Can't wait. Sacked a couple times and throw like the game losing pick. We get the touchdown. I, I Come on. Do we win? Oh my lord. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. I actually have a little bit of like a, a headache with this game. Like we're just not. Like, it's just the playbooks probably. But how are we not dominating teams? Or at least not looking like the underdogs every time we go into each game. It's ridiculous dude. I know we're 10 and 6, but roster talent, we're like 16 and 0. Come on, man. At least we win. The Steelers win. And I believe we have done a realistic rebuild for every single team in the NFL this season for Madden. If not, let me know in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure I hit every single team. Steelers were the last one, I believe. And yeah, that was a lot of fun. I actually uh, I kind of wish that trading thing existed earlier because the rebuilds would have been even better, I feel, in my opinion at least. Definitely a little more variety with the trading actually being possible player for player or player for pick, pick for player, whatever it be. Uh, but regardless, I'm glad that we got this one in. So you know, at least we got some fun. Mac Jones, Super Bowl winning quarterback. Got that five-year, 160 pretty much. And the Steelers here, outside of some retirements, I mean, they can still keep going if they want. So... Maybe this is a roster we keep around and we come back to, but typically uh, we don't have time to go for reloads in general, so probably not going to be ones of teams that are successful and actually win the whole thing. This is what the uh, stat line looked like. Obviously, Russell slightly outperformed Mac, you would think, but yardage is really low, so I, I don't even care, honestly. Uh, Aaron Jones, nice touchdowns. Juju Smith-Schuster crushed it. Uh, sack totals, interceptions, nothing really that special in the game. But anyways, that is going to be it. This is what the roster looks like at the end of it. Very solid team. We'll actually take a look at some of the the overalls for, for some of the, the named guys for Pittsburgh. Obviously, TJ Watt looking very good. Versatile as hell. Selfless. Interesting. These abilities kind of suck. I ain't going to lie, but look at those traits. Uh, let's take a look at Minka now. Why not? Minka Fitzpatrick looking pretty good. Devin Bush. Let's take a look at him. Pretty damn fast. Hit power up to 88. Don't really care too much about these guys because these guys are, you know, players we can draft all the time. But Tyson Campbell finally got him up to good status. Usually he just sits as a backup for us or whatnot. And, you know, it actually kind of worked out. What about Edmonds? Edmonds ended up as an 88 overall player. Obviously that regression is going to start soon, though. That's his peak. Uh, offensively, let's take a look at Juju Smith-Schuster. 80, uh, 88 overall. 28 years old. 98 overall. Uh, Got that speed up a little bit. I think he starts with like 89 or something, but very solid player. Chase Claypool. Let's take a look at his abilities. Didn't really gain much in the speed excel department, but obviously a very solid player with almost 99 in release, which is insane. And then Mr. Mac Jones, 92 overall quarterback. Break sack sucks, but outside of that, he is literally god tier. Throw power he got from 86 to 89. He still has some upgrades left to gain. But that is going to be the realistic rebuild of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I actually have no idea when this is going to come up because it's a little bit late on a Friday for me. And I don't think I'll be able to get this render done in time. So yeah, there's a very good chance that this actually is a Saturday upload. And maybe you already seen a video earlier today. I'm not sure. Not sure the plan for tomorrow either. It's going to probably be Bulldogs or something. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed... Maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitter, Jerome Pierre, second channel, Pierre Plays, and twitch.tv slash Jerome Pierre. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for realistic rebuild ideas, or maybe I did forget a team where you want to see fantasies, or you have a, a trade rebuild you want to see, like Russell Wilson to the Bears, I've seen a couple of people say, or something like that, let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll be come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!